Hey guys, it's David from Automotive Press. Guess where I am? I am actually at the Nissan factory all the way in the south part of Japan. It's called the Kita Kyushu area and we have a very interesting factory tour. But what I want to do is just show you quickly what's going on in terms of how the cars are formed. Right here we have the Nissan GTR, obviously discontinued now. Beautiful vehicle, but just follow with me and I'm actually going to explain to you exactly how cars are built because I can't film the factory today but they have a really good showroom here that shows exactly what happens with manufacturing process. And actually it's a better way to explain how it works because they've got a really nice display here that shows what happens in a typical factory. The same for all car assembly, all car factories actually in the world. Pretty well they all follow the same process. And the first process is called a stamping or press shop. They use gigantic stamping equipment to basically form the basic panels of the car. So for example, you can see that we start off with the rolls or think of it like a giant toilet paper, except it's not paper, it, obviously these are steels. The thickness range from 0.55 to about 3.2 millimeters. Some are galvanized, some are not galvanized. And basically, if you kind of think of areas that may get rusted, like a side panels and lower panels are all galvanized, but usually roofs are not galvanized because the roof never rusts out since the water just drops straight out from the car and they don't stay in the roof. So anyway, you have a steel panel that's uncoiled from this big toilet paper thing and then take this basic panel and they cut out all the big openings like the doors and so forth. Then they actually um, do what we call the drawing, which is to draw the materials to do some more of this deeper formation of the shape but it's not finished yet because now they have to do further cutouts and then now you do the complete trimming of all the smaller parts so you've got both the three-dimensional look and feel as well as all the openings are completed and this basically forms the basic panel for the cars there's panel for the left panel for the right obviously roof hood trunk or the lift gate and then the underbody so they all have to come together now so kind of almost like an origami if you can think of it that way and in case you were curious, I was in charge of both the stamping area and also the body area and a little bit in the paint area as well. And I worked quite a bit in the assembly area. So that's my basic background. But I did a lot of work in this body assembly or body shop, we call it. And this is um, typically referred as a welding shop because all the panels that came out of the stamping shop are now welded together to form the basic structure of the car. And this is perhaps the most important thing and the reason why I continue to stress measuring the gaps and so forth because all the gaps are actually formed at this stage when the panels are welded together to form the basic body and you can see kind of in the drawing here um, but these are the various components again the side panels the roof front back and doors and underbody and all this has to be welded together using different method but in exact sequence they have to follow a particular process and they have to be welded together until such that the entire body is created. And it's the most complicated part of the whole manufacturing process for cars because if you don't get this right, then nothing else will fit in the following processes. So we do lots of welding, up to several thousand welding spots. Most of them uses this thing called a welding gun and it applies pressure and heat. Um, using voltage and amperage to melt part of the metal. So you can see all these welding spots, you can see all these dark spots. Basically the, the panels are uh, fused together by applying pressure and heat here. And they use what they call the welding gun. You can see the tips right here. These two come together and squeeze the metal and melt it. And we use mostly robotics in this area because it's very awkward for human operators to carry the welding gun and try to weld it like they used to 40, 50 years ago. So usually 90 to 95% of the factory in the body shop are all automated with robotics. And I did a lot of programming back in the day. I, th I think my peak was programming about 400 robots. That's why I'm always talking about panel fit and panel alignment. So that's the body shop. Once that's completed, then we go to the paint shop, which is also obviously very critical. And the basic steps are such that you've got kind of these four layers. One is the electro deposition coating. So that's uh, what we call the primer. And usually we just call it E coating for short. And how that works is that the panel and the actual coating 
are charged in the opposite direction so that they attract each other plus and minus and they come together and they basically adhere much better that way. So that's the primer. Then you have the, they call it intermediate coat, but usually in the general in the industry, we call it kind of base coat. That's the first actual color coat. Not exactly the same as the top coat, but it kind of mimics the final color. So that's the intermediate coat, or we call it base coat, and then next is the top coat. And that's the, basically the color that you've chosen, the color for the car, and that signals exactly what the car looks like in terms of the color and the hue. Uh, finally, there's a clear coat applied, which will bring that glossness to the whole paint. And so you got one, two, three, four layers. That's typical. In the more expensive cars, you may have the fifth layer, either additional clear coat or additional top coat. So that also happens regularly. But usually in most of the normal cars, is four layers of paint. And then, uh, of course, we still have to assemble it because you now have a body that's all painted uh, all over the place, but there are no parts or engine or transmission insides. It's an empty shell. So the assembly is when all of the components are placed into a vehicle, everything from dash panel to, um, to the engine, transmission, suspension, tires, wheels, that all goes in there. It's a, this is the longest process in many ways because you have to install the most number of parts in assembly shop. Here they're showing, for example, the dash panel, the evolution of it. Starts off with a bunch of metals that are welded together then you, have, you place a number of plastic components to it, plastic injection components, then the electronics, and then the wiring. Then you have a complete cockpit module. This whole thing slides into the car as one piece in just one short sweep. So it's really pretty impressive to see that. By the way, I didn't talk about it earlier, but um, in the models like Tesla, and also in the future manufacturing, they're trying to combine all these small pieces into a single die cast or single cast and that's called a giga casting now or mega casting. And that technology will change the look and feel of manufacturing because you don't have to weld so many small pieces together. So this is when basically the cars are complete and then basically go through the final inspection and the inspection goes through everything. They, they, they've shown that here, more than 1200 areas needs to be checked, but it's not 1200 areas that needs to be checked at the very end. Some of these things are checked throughout the process, but you got everything from the emblems, the wipers, the turn signals, door locks, mirrors, windows, brakes, uh, obviously powertrain check and brake lights, that so forth. It's a complete check and they do a lot of stuff and you can kind of see this bright light. This is not exactly the same light they use in the factory but similar and they can check for any kind of paint defect. You can see the little bit of orange peel. That's just the result of the paint process uh, and you look for defects to make sure that everything is perfect and so they are really good at looking for these details. And then that's pretty well it. Then you end up with the vehicle here at the Nissan plant in southern Japan. They produce the Patrol, which is our Armada. And it's all new. You know how much I love the Armada right now. But they also produce other cars, such as the Serena here, which is kind of like a, a minivan, but not quite the size that we have. It's very popular in Japan. This type of compact vans are very popular. Uh, and this factory has produced many different vehicles in the past. But you can see from this uh, showcase that they produce some really cool cars. They're starting with uh, a 1973 Datsun pickup and then the classic Nissan Silvia series, which is our 240SX or 200SX. And they produce quite a few different iterations of that. They also produce the X-Trail uh, as, well as well as Murano uh, and then Duelist which wasn't sold in North America. Uh, so they showcased everything in here. But to me, what was really cool is the Pathfinder, which was called Nissan Terrano. And that was produced here. And uh, also obviously the Silvia, all the different series of Silvia was cool because for me, Silvia was just as cool as Toyota Celica or Celica when I was growing up. I think it was one of the cars that I admired a lot because I love the design. And this factory is the one that produced that. But right now, they produce many different models still. But the ones that really excite me are the Armadas because they're the cars that I really like from Nissan. Uh, obviously, Armadas' uh, sister model, QX80, is also produced at this Nissan Southern plant. So I hope you enjoy my brief explanation of how the cars are produced. And I hope that you learn something from it. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up, make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well? Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.